Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Masu Pro Wrestling, and welcome to Masu Pro Wrestling Presents. See you next time. This is the final show of season one for MPW, and we're going to start it off hot and heavy with some over-the-top battle royal action. Starting us off will be the self-proclaimed Panda Archon herself, Rize. Now, this is the absolute last opportunity for someone to pop off. And I mean, Rize's been, been an active grenade just waiting to go off. Can Rize pop it off here? At the grandest stage of them all, the biggest MPW, the biggest MPW event of all time. Rize is going to be starting us off. Had a rough season one for Rize, but wanting to start off on the right foot for season two. And number two for this matchup, Mama Inu coming in. And another person who's had a rough season one, but impressive nonetheless. And I could definitely see Mama Inu going the entire way in this battle royale. Over the top, both feet have to touch the floor. Everybody in the MPW roster is familiar with an over the top battle royale. Mama Inu's daughter will be in the Idol Division Championship match later tonight against Glitchy Bastards, the current Idol Division Champion, a three-time Idol Division Champion, Glitchy Bastards. And Tita Shiba is looking to take her first ever Idol Division Championship past Season 1 and move to Season 2 as the champion. I mean, it would be a big day for the Shiba household if both family members could pick off a win here. Honestly, I don't know how the ring will hold up with all this star power in it. The turnbuckles might bounce off and the ropes might fling out of it, out of their holding. With already Mama Inu and Reze just have so much star power already. And it's only two out of the eight that will start us out tonight. We have a plethora of amazing matches tonight, including Merlin GTB versus Bonk for the Icon Division Championship. And of course, Lunas, the winner of the Ultimate Openweight Championship Tournament, will challenge Zara Taro for the open weight championship. And of course, speaking of open weight, two time open weight champion Gaelic Angel will be joining this over the top battle royal. That's right. Icons and idols collide for maybe one last time in a battle royal. Gaelic Angel had a pretty impressive year, pretty impressive season, was unable to capture that brass ring, that gold, the Icon Division Championship, but held two Openweight Championships, and I mean, that's more than some people have. A very impressive run. Has since teamed up with Unchained Awesome as of recent. They've seemed to have each other's back, but Unchained has his own match he's got to worry about. Unchained will be locked inside of a steel cage against Flare Zero later tonight. Flair and Chain have been at odds recently. Flair came in, attacked Chain after a match, and lowered the steel cage, telling him that's that's what he wants. That's what he wants to do. He wants to challenge. He wants to have Chain in the steel cage, and we will see that later tonight here. All the members of this match were not the ones to win the 30-person battle royal. That we had at last call, that was Merlin, who will challenge for the Icon Division Championship. So maybe this is a little bit of redemption for these people. Some practice, the ring rust 
shaken off for this match. Number four is going to make sure that no matter how this event goes, today is going to be a good day as Minty Clovers, a former Idol Division champion. I mean, Minty Clovers is a perfect example of how your wrestling career can go. Minty Clovers went like 0-14 at the beginning of Season 1, could not catch a break, went undefeated in, an, in a uh, Idol Division Championship number one contender tournament, picked up that championship and held it for one of the longest reigns in Idol Division history. An impressive showing. I mean, this is, this is the exact reason you don't underestimate the underdog. Minty Clovers... Looking to pick up a final win for season one. And now that we're halfway through the contestants, who else could show up for this match? And it will be Dobby. Dobby, one of the more unorthodox, maybe the dark horse of this match. An unorthodox competitor. More of a street fighter than a wrestler, but at the end of the day, he gets results. He was unable to pick up a Icon Division Championship or an Openweight Championship for his first season, though he did show up much later than some. But Dobby has been impressive. He lasted very long in the 30-person Battle Royale, so maybe this is just right up his alley, ready to pick up that win before the end of the season. That's... Everybody wants to just load up on wins right before the end of the season, and especially when you're in front of a sold-out crowd of three viewers and more to come, potentially. The grandest stage in MPW history. Maybe so far Dobby is the one with the least experience in the ring, but I would not count him out, and I would neither count out this cat right here, Tabby Cat, former open weight champion, winning it in the biggest upset I think we saw all season in MPW history. Tabby Cat beat Bonk, one of the longest and most dominant open weight championships to champions to date. Tabby Cat completely, nobody expected it, picked up that win, got himself an Openweight Championship before the end of the season, but since lost it to Zara Taro, who will face Blueness later on this, this episode or this show of MPW. Zara Taro versus Blueness will be here, and I mean... Tabby Cat looking to cap off his uh, his season one with a victory here in this battle royal. I mean, another person not to estimate, underestimate. This is basically the battle royal of dark horses. People not to underestimate. And someone you simply can't underestimate because her accolades, no, no. No, no other. It is Dancing with Draven, a two-time Idol Division champion. The winner of the first ever Idol Division Golden Opportunity. The first ever Idol Division champion. What else can be said about Dancing with Draven that hasn't already been done? Dancing with Draven, certainly a threat in this match. And she is here to end off her historic season one with another historic win. Can Dancing with Draven do it? Dancing with Draven's friend and rival, Schmeep's World, lost in the finals to T the Sheba, who will challenge Glitchy for the Idol Division Championship due to her injuries caused by Beep's World, a somewhat demonic and dark variant of Schmeep's, and we will see those two go at it. And a last idle standing match. You're gonna wanna stick around for all these matches as we will make history tonight.
dancing with Draven. I mean, if I'm if I'm the rest of the group here, the re the other seven competitors, and I see Draven, I mean, I'm targeting Draven instantaneously. No disrespect, but Draven is dangerous. And speaking of dangerous, it's a two-time Icon Division champion, Sleepy Pango. And I believe this is the last competitor to join us. This is number eight, I believe. If my math is correct, Sleepy Pango. I mean, Sleepy Pango's had a rocky ride as of his entire season one. But I think the main theme for Sleepy Pango in this season one is he never gave up. That was Sleepy's main theme. He never gave up. He held two Icon Division championships. He was robbed out of the first one. And Sleepy Pengu pulled off a pretty strong season one, if I say so myself. And I mean, I said target down Draven, but I mean, Sleepy Pengu I, might just be that, that much even scarier on that level. We have a lot of Dark Horse picks. I don't think I could predict who could win this match. Rize goes after, or Dobby goes after Rize. Angel going after Tabby. They've had some words before. Dobby sending Rize off the ropes, but stops it. Draven and Sleepy going at it. Belly to belly by Sleepy. Or belly to back. Gaelic Angel to Rize. Going for a power bomb, but Rize fighting out of it. Dobby going after Minty. Spine Buster plants her. And a Northern Light suplex from Dobby. Rize getting chopped in the corner. If you blink for a second, you might miss something. Dobby with the power bomb to Mama Inu, bouncing her head off the bottom rope. Northern Light suplex from Sleepy to, Dra to Draven. Gaelic Angel trying to get Rize and keep her into that corner. Draven over the top rope. I mean, Sleepy's doing what I said. Go after the potentially the most dangerous link, which is Draven. Hurricane Rana reversal maybe by Sleepy into a power bomb to Maminu and Dobby was eliminated. Well, the camera wasn't focusing. Dobby is our first elimination. There's always got to be a first, and unfortunately for Dobby, he's gonna take the walk of shame back to the back. Minty Clover's got Angel in the corner. Now we're down to only seven. Very quickly, like I said, blinking you might miss something. Rize gets sent into the corner by Mama Inu. And that stalling suplex by Tabby Cat to Sleepy Pengu just showing off. Lands it. Looking around the ring, making sure nobody is missing. Rize in the corner. Minty Clovers. Minty and Rize were tag team partners for the double eliminator random selector tag tournament, but they didn't make it very far. And Rize's been eliminated by Minty. Going right back to Gaelic Angel. Rize is number two. We, they are falling like flies in our opening matchup. Draven's got Tabby with the three clotheslines. Canadian Destroyer by Angel. To Sleepy Pengu. Now Angel's gonna move Tabby Cat. Angel drop kit. No, Hurricane Rana sends Tabby Cat over and almost risking himself in elimination. That's the kind of person Angel is. He will risk himself to get results, sending Draven over the top rope. Angel's looking to get the most eliminations this matchup. Gonna send Draven off the ropes again, but Sleepy's in the way, stops him. God's last gift to Minty Clovers connects. God's last gift from Angel to Minty Clovers. And German suplexes for Sleepy. Draven dominating the boys in the ring, dumping Sleepy on top of his head. And, I, and Mama Inu and Minty have history. Those. Minty was Maminu's first ever opponent in MPW Scoop Slam. Sound of night to Gaelic Angel. Giving Angel a little something for a, trying to eliminate her earlier, but caught by Minty Clovers. Minty looking to eliminate Draven, and she does. Minty Clovers 
Clears Draven. Ooh, goes for that clothesline on Sleepy, but doesn't quite get it. A little bit too low for Sleepy as the idols and the icons go after each other. You know, tackle what you know. Russian leg sweep, standing shooting star press. Minty Clover's now targeting Sleepy, maybe working together for a temporary partnership with Gaelic Angel. But that partnership is short-lived. Gaelic Angel trying to get Minty onto the ropes. Is that at the place you want to be to eliminate someone? And now Minty Clover's tying up Angel in a submission hold. Looking to wear him down as Sleepy and Mama Inu fight it out on the ropes. Mama Inu over the top and eliminated. It is down to Sleepy. It's down to Angel and it's down to Minty for the first match of MPW Presents. See you next time. Angel fighting out of it. Minty's very smart trying to keep her stamina in the corner. Trying to stay out of the action for a little bit. Making sure they're focused on each other. Let your enemies take each other out. Angel takes down Minty. The triple threat becomes so difficult because you got to watch your back and what's in front of you. You have to have two sets of eyes for both sides. Minty Clovers. Clothesline, but then a forearm caught by Angel. Angel sends Minty in the corner. Forearm rolled through. Clothesline. Minty's got both guys in the corner. The mighty Minty. Holden down the fort, controlling the ring. Minty Clover's looking to do something to Sleepy Pengu. Ooh, I think I think Minty was trying to be a little bit of a cheeky. He was trying to go for a go to Sleepy on Sleepy himself. But of course, at Sleepy's own move, he knows exactly how to handle it. Oh my god, using Sleepy's momentum against him. Minty trying to get in a safe position, knowing that she can't be eliminated because it's not over the top. Gaelic Angel, fall from grace to Sleepy. Now Gaelic Angel is in complete control. Angel sends Sleepy into the corner. And now trying to eliminate Sleepy. Got him up top. Ooh, but Sleepy fights back. Luthez press caught. Angel by Minty. Taking her opportunities when she has them. God's last gift. No reversal. Northern Lights by Sleepy. Ooh, Minty a little short. Miscalculated there. Again with these spin kicks. Somersault kick and spinning heel kick misses. Ooh, right in the nads. No disqualification. No referee, so that is completely legal. And that's got a smart for Angel. Just lifting Minty and taking her down. Could we see another fall from Grace? Minty Clovers is up. Fall from Grace connects it. Sleepy's back up though, giving Minty an ample time to roll out of the way. Sleepy just working over the legs of Angel. Sleepy Pengu, go to Sleepy. They're knocking off all their strongest moves to try and wear down their opponent. Neither members have gone for an elimination. They're trying to deal as much damage to make it easier to send someone over the top ropes. Minty Clovers though, right as I say that, Minty Clover, Clover sent Sleepy up and out of them and Minty Clovers hanging on. Angel trying to knock Minty off the apron. Minty Clovers is in trouble. Gaelic Angel looking to cap off season one with a victory. Minty Clovers gets the shoulder into the gut. Minty Clover's looking to end off her season one. Her season started with a loss. Can she end it with a win? Angel back between the ropes. Off the ropes and a clothesline! <laughs> that clothesline barely ever hits. 
It feels so good to see it. You love to see Minty Clovers hit that clothesline. Angel's unable to hit his though. Minty Clovers, oh my God, ripcord forearm. Minty Clovers getting Angel back up into the ropes. But Angel is just such a beefcake boy. He's so beefy, he's built like a brick house. Those chops and forearms just do nothing to Angel, and Angel caps off his season one with an elimination, tossing Minty Clovers up and over the top rope. See you next time for Minty Clovers Gaelic Angel. Congratulations to Gaelic Angel topping off our show tonight. As we will move on to our second match of the evening. I mean, what a perfect way to end the season for Gaelic Angel. Congratulations, but congratulations to everyone that's made it this far in MPW. We'll see you guys next. It is time for our second match of the evening, and you can see the steel cage floating above the ring, hanging above the ring, unchained awesome. Former Icon Division champion is gonna make his entrance first, and this is a grudge match of sorts between Flare Zero and Unchained. Flare seemed to let his aggression out a handful of weeks ago, as he trapped Chain inside the steel cage, and then these two have been at each other's throats for so uh, for the rest of the month, really. Chain showed up in Potato's corner during Flair's match to try to get into his head. After Chain beat a won a match, Flair chatted shit from the stage. I mean, these two have been arguing back and forth, and their history goes a far a far bit uh, away, you know. Flair Zero and Chain have had many a matches together or against each other, and a lot of the times Flair comes up short. Flair is, you know, coming in from work every day, working hard. Sometimes he doesn't have enough time to go into the gym like everybody else does, but he still puts in this work every single day, and people like Unchained squander the work that Flair puts in, and I think that frustration is boiled up to a point that Flair just burst it. He sees people like Chain that's cocky. They didn't they didn't earn their shot. He feels at least. He didn't earn their shot. They they're they're cheating their way through. They're working with people. I think, you know, Flair has always been a little bit of a stickler for the rules, if you will. He doesn't really get when people break them. He, he, there's rules for a reason. He's a very methodical person and ever since Unchained and Gaelic has Gaelic Angel have teamed up, I mean I feel like Progressively, Flair's been getting more angry, and finally at this point, he said, I want you in the cage, Chain. I want to fight you one-on-one -on -one in the cage. No matter how many times you beat me, every time you beat me for that number one contendership in a tournament, I'm, I'm finally going to get it. Flair Zero wants to end his season killing this demon that is unchained and putting it to rest, putting this nightmare to rest for him. And it seems to be something on his mind as he is continuously going after Chain. I mean, we'll have to see how this match goes, but it is gonna be Unchain versus Flair as they lower the steel cage around each other. And now, if you guys are unfamiliar with how a steel cage match is done, because we've only had one actual steel cage match, Ripcord forearm by Chain, uh, a steel cage match is a match you may submit or pin your opponent inside the ring or you can win by escaping the cage that is climbing to the top of the cage and climbing all the way out. As you can see, Chain going for the cover. There is a door um, on the left side that you can also exit out, but if you can get out of the ring and both feet touch the floor, you are the winner of this match. And Chain is, is somewhat familiar with being inside of a steel cage, but doesn't have a great record in it. He didn't have a steel cage match but he did have an MMA rules match against Sleepy Pengu. 
which had him go um, one on one with Sleepy Pengu, first person to get knocked out or tap out would lose, and Flair is trying to make a quick exit here. Certainly a more dangerous way to exit and win the, or to win the matches to exit the cage because you're at such a, a risky position right here. Power on by chain, but it is probably one of the easier ways to do it because you just need to get your person out, get your opponent down and climb up as quickly as possible. Get to the door, do something. And Chain is asking the referee to open the door, but Flair Zero going to stop him. I mean, the door's locked, so the referee's got to take some time to get it unlocked. And, of course, the referee's not going to open it unless you're prepared to exit Leg Lariat. Off the ropes. Back body drop by Flair Zero. And now Flair going right back up to the top of the cage. The last time we saw an actual cage match was the first ever Idol Division Championship match between T the Sheba and Dancing with Draven, where Draven tossed T off the top of the cage to win the match. Flair is in a. Ooh, Flair looks knocked chain back, but instead of go, trying to keep climbing and further up the up the cage, decides to double axe handle off the top rope, kind of like a springboard. We don't really see Flair go for a springboard very often. Two count to chain, but no. And now chain's gonna roll up Flair. Get out of one. Drop toe hold, but slightly too short. That's what people have been calling Chain for years, but he hasn't let it put him down. The extremely average sized wrestler of Unchained. Flair cl climbing back up to the top. He can go on any side of the ring. And Flair's going to try it on this one. Flair almost up. Ooh, but Chain yet. He had an adva or a, a point right there. He was almost at the top, but Chain just barely knocks it out. And now Desperation again going to try and get out. Chain, though, coming to his senses, bashing his knee against the cage. You can use the cage as a weapon. Flair really trying to get out here, though. Wanting to get that win, trying to find the footing. The fence of the cage is not the easiest thing to climb. And as you can see, Flair is going to fall flat on his back. Below zero to Chain and Flair feeling the effects of that last fall. This could be it. I think Flair might have Chain here if he can get up to his feet and get to the cage. Oh, he's going for the cover. I mean, if Chain can't kick out here, no kick out of two. I mean, that's the split decisions you have to make. Do you think maybe I go for the cover or do you think maybe I try to go for a, uh, a cut or a escape the cage or go for a cover? You have to make that decision. And I think Flair just assumed that he would be able to pin him, potentially get the win there. He was going to be faster than him climbing the cage. And now Chain is going to take his first opportunity, I think his first opportunity, to climb the cage. But Flair is immediately stopping him into a power bomb, just jackknife power bomb. And now Flair is going to take that opportunity, but is it too late? Has he given Chain enough time to rest and repair, recuperate himself? Ooh, Chain's up to one knee, just barely makes it to Flair before he can pull himself up to the top. I think Flair might be slowing down. Flair might be gassed already. Chain wobbly on his feet, shaking his head, trying to get back into the, into the match. Flair sent off the top rope again. Kick out of one. For this match, it's all about... The grudges that these two carry. Combo breaker by Flair. And wanting to prove that they're better than one another. Flair going for the cover. And Flair zero. Puts on Chain to rest. Proving that he has got the stuff and he is enough. Flair zero. An impressive matchup. I mean, Flair was pretty much in control that whole match. 
Flare Zero is gonna cap off his season with a win and send Unchained home back in. Congratulations to Flare Zero putting away his demons. And we will see you guys in the next match. <laughs> All right, it is time for some Idol Division singles action. It is going to be Rocky starting us off. The former Idol Division champion that lost it to Glitchy Bastards. Last premium live event. I mean, one of the most dominant idols in the division, one of the most dominant idol division champions of all time. On the grandest stage in MPW history, I mean, truly took the title of spookiest person in the idol division, maybe in the whole MPW. But is here to pick up or attempt to pick up another win before ending her season one or their season one. Unfortunately, Rocky unable to pick up a number one contendership match or uh, number one contendership for the Idol Division. That was won by Tila Sheba. T's second singles opportunity at an Idol Division championship. Can she put Glitchy away? We will have to see, but this is going to be singles contest contested. Our first match contested, our first and maybe only match actually, contested with regular singles rules. Rize, or Rize, Rocky has really done it all in the Idol Division. Openweight champion, Idol Division champion. What else can you ask for an idol? And this idol, unfortunately, couldn't pick up a win for their first season, but it is MPW's own Bunny Bean Usino. Usino looking to cap off their season one with a win. Usino was just so, it was always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Usino had so many opportunities, or not even so many opportunities, but so many just, there was chances on chances and just nothing lined up for them. They nearly won it in the elimination chamber. They nearly had so many opportunities, but just never quite could reach that point that they needed to, to get that championship. Usino is one of the more impressive contenders in the idol division and just unfortunately unable to pick up any championships going in but i mean if you could end your your season with a win against someone who's had two championships that is incredibly impressive and i don't count out usino from being able to for being able to do that i think usino is perfectly capable of that oh rocky gets launched over or gets out of it Using their body weight to have Usino overextend the throw, but Usino sends Rocky right over. This is a singles matchup, meaning there are countouts and there are disqualifications, including rope breaks as well. So you gotta make sure to fight, you know, fight fairly, fight respectfully, and within the rules. Usino. And here's the strength of the chops from Rocky. The back handspring that they love to do so much. Needy T by the Bunny Bean. Usino may be a bunny witch, but they have been nothing but magic this season. And they have done an incredibly good job. But just unfortunately, you know, sometimes championships don't always mean that you're the best. 
Some some of the goats, some of the greatest of all times, don't even have that many championships or championships at all. You never know. Fisherman suplex. So you can't count out Usino and all that they've achieved. You can't count out anybody. Inverted DDT. Uh, Moonsault inverted DDT by Usino. Kick out of one. Now, Usino going to tie up Rocky. I mean, we don't see Usino use many submission holds, but maybe Rocky could tap out. That would be an incredibly impressive thing to do. I don't even know if we've seen Rocky tap out once. We very rarely see anyone get tapped out, unless you're like Emrys Morgana or something. Sliding knee strike takes Usino out, and I mean, targeting the legs of Usino is absolutely a effective uh, form of attack because a lot of the power of the bunny bean comes directly from their legs. Oh my god, a sharp power bomb flips them over into a knee strike right to the temple. Right above the eye. Rocky is showing no restraint here against Usino. Rocky going up top, right in front of the French Canadian commentators. What is Rocky looking for from the top? Ooh, flying chop reversal. And the French Canadian commentators are getting up. They're saying, uh-uh. We do not want to get caught in between these two. Recount. Usino now playing a little bit of cat and mouse with Rocky, even though they're bu they're a bunny. Continuing this, ooh. Now Usino gets back into the ring. Maybe the mind games were for not as Rocky chops Usino into the corner, and it's still attacking the legs, expertly targeting the legs of Usino to prevent a bunny hop Pele kick and a bunny stomp. Ooh, Pele kick, as I say, it calls it right here. Doesn't matter how much damage to the legs, it still seems like Usaino's got a little bit of pep in their step. Jumps over the top rope right into the clutches of Rocky. But not for long. Reversal with those elbows getting out of her clutches. Sling blade. Floats over to a drop kick. And that is exactly why targeting the leg, legs of Usino is very important. And this is going to be another reminder as to why you target the bunny beans legs. Pig leg kick. Ooh, rolled just barely out of the way, does Rocky. Rocky woke up for the last second of that and barely it shaved across Rocky's nose. Going back up top. Is this a smart decision by Rocky Flying Chop? Straight down, that could split your head directly in half. As they continue to fight on the outside, just boots to the head onto the concrete. Absolute just devastation out there, could bust a nose. Damage an orbitable, uh, an orbitable, orbital bone, excuse me, sends them, damage the ribs as they go into the solid steel steps. Oh my god, bouncing the skull off the concrete, just no, just no care for your opponent. They're looking to put as much damage in on each other. Eight count, they have till the count of ten to get back into the ring, but Usano breaks the count, ooh. Sends her, sends him into the apron. Face buster by Usino. Usino gonna send Rocky back in the ring because that's the only place you really can win. Rocky back up to their feet. Uh, Moonsault, northern, uh, inverted DDT, excuse me. Covers Rocky into the center of the ring though. Could be enough, no. The former idol and open weight champion not putting away. 
To the back. Right into the spine with that boot. Brain buster. No. Rotates out of it. Get rotated, idiot. Ooh. Choke slam. Running choke slam by Rocky. And now Rocky is going to make sure that Usaino is going into the lost and found to put Usaino away. No. And that is why I say Usaino is not to be underestimated. They're the one of the most resilient wrestlers we have in MPW, but a second one. Usaino scouts it this time. Clobber to the back of the head. Snapmare off the ropes and a drop kick to the right ear. You don't understand how important your ears are. Until they're damaged. I mean, Rocky just grabbing Usaino out. Onto the outside. Atomic drop into a splash combination. Unlike we've ever seen. And now, ooh, Rocky was getting a little bit frustrated. Sort of choking Usaino out. But Usaino, ooh, Brain Buster quickly gets out of it. Brain Buster dropping the entire weight of Rocky's head. Onto her neck, onto concrete. Ooh, sweeps the legs again, targeting the legs. I feel like we've seen that come into Rocky's favor so far. Usaino hasn't really been able to get off many big moves with the amount of damage being dealt to their legs. Rocky, or Usaino is out cold on the outside. Just staring up at the lights. Three count, but reset to one as Rocky got out. Rocky going back up top. I mean, this might be mind games, might be disrespect to Sino. Ooh, gets out of the way, doesn't quite get hit by that clothesline. Scratches the back and continuing to target the back. Ooh, face first into the canvas. Rocky is in complete control right now, and Usaino is about to feel it. Canadian Destroyer in the ropes, completely pretzeling Usaino. To put Usaino away, and Rocky does, showing what it means to be an idol and a open weight champion, showing that championship diff onto Usaino. Congratulations to Rocky. Rocky says to Usaino, see you next time. As we move on to our next incredibly massive matchup you're not gonna want to miss it so don't change this video to something else don't look at your recommended because you're not gonna want to miss it all right it is time for the mpw openweight championship match and that's not Blueness or Zara Taro's theme song or, or entrance. That is a dirt potato because even though Blueness won the Ultimate Openweight Championship Tournament, the Openweight Championship is contested against someone randomly selected. And so this match, much like the one when Angel won a number one contendership for the, won his contendership for the Openweight, it is contested in triple threat Balls count anywhere. That will be Potato. Blueness and the champion Zara Taro. Can Potato cap off his year with a championship around his waist? Can Blueness earn their first championship? And can Zara Taro retain his first championship? This is a night of firsts. This is the MPW Openweight Championship. It is known as the Blue Chipper Championship because it is defended twice as many times as any other championship in MPW, and it's contested against any person in any division, and that is where Blueness comes in. Blueness defeated and outlasted, I believe, eight. I want to say eight. Um, other contenders in the Ultimate Openweight Tournament 
becoming our ultimate open weight tournament winner, our first ever. And that that tournament earned them a shot at the open weight championship. So they are here, and I mean, Lunas and Potato both joined the MPW roster a little bit later than everybody else. And they have not been able to pick up a championship. Can Blunus or Potato do it? This is false count anywhere, meaning anything goes. You can pin or submit your opponent anywhere in the MPW uh, arena. And it's first fall to a finish, meaning it is not elimination. You want to make sure that you can stop your opponents from pinning each other or else you might lose the championship. And it also means the champion doesn't even need to get pinned to lose the championship. Speaking of the champion, one of the newest members of the MPW roster and the newest MPW open weight champion. It is Zara Taro. Zara Taro, the MPW open weight champion. This man has been impressive. I believe Zara Taro has only lost once in MPW in his MPW career. He lost to Unchained, I believe. I don't think he's lost to anybody else. This man has been on a hot streak, and he's the openweight champion. Beat Tabby Cat a handful of weeks ago for the openweight championship. This was his first ever championship win. And of course, Zarataro is going to want to look to defend this championship, but he's got two hungry competitors. That he's gonna turn, that he's gonna walk his back against. It's Blueness and Potato circling the ring like ravenous wolves. And the hamster pull it off. Everybody wants to go home with a championship at the end of season one, but can Zara Taro do it? The MPW Championship is one of the, or the Openweight Championship is one of the hardest championships to defend because so many people are out to get you. You have Blueness, you have Potato, and you have to defend this twice as many times as any other championship in Falls Count anywhere. Meaning, you can get pinned or submitted anywhere. You have no safety net. People can use weapons, they can do anything. The Openweight Championship on the line Potato, Lunas, and Zara Taro. Ooh, a little hesitation out the gate so far, but Potato going after Blunus early German suplex. Zara Taro got caught in another German suplex. Welcome to the suplex streets. Population Potato as he sends Zaratar to the outside. This is going to be a very hard to follow match for the competitors, but I'm going to do our best to keep up the commentary and watch as we go. So you see that Potato and Blueness are fighting it out, but right behind him, bumps him, is Zarataro. You got to watch out for everything behind you and around you. Drop kick a little bit too short. No, uh, moonsault into an inverted DDT. I don't want to keep. Don't know why I want to keep calling it a Northern Light Suplex. Scoop slam plants Blueness down. Zarataro Hurricane Rana jumping, clearing Blueness. Zarataro has definitely got a speed advantage. I mean, it's all it's speed, strength versus height here, with Blueness being a aerial assassin, Zarataro being a fast motherfucker. And Potato just being a stone wall. Arm drag takes out Potato and... The rules of an open weight match are coming, are, are being shown if you don't, can't quite understand from the words I'm saying of what a open weight championship match is like. This is exactly what it's gonna be like. Weapons completely allowed as Zarataro drives the sledgehammer into both of his opponents. See, Blueness is playing it kind of smart, trying to uh, expend their energy as little as possible, making sure only trying to get in on the moments they can actually do something, but also you need to make sure you're watching your opponents at all time because if Zarataro goes for a pin and you're not paying attention, bada bing, bada boom, one, two, three, it's over. 
and you lose your opportunity at the Open Weight Championship. You have to watch both your opponents. You have to keep the eye on the ball. Head scissor onto the bat. Ooh, bouncing Zarataro's head off his knee. And Potato just using, showing that strength. Deadlift power uh, power bomb. Sledgehammer to the gut. See, goes for the cover, but Zarataro there to stop it. Zarataro expertly wasting no time to break up that pin. Spin around into the Hurricane Rana. Potato lifting Zarataro over his head. Lunas is back up. This is the last opportunity for Potato or Blunus to earn a title in the first season. Will they do it? Who's going to go home the champion? And can Zarataro make history at being the first open weight champion to defend in a triple threat? The last time this match happened, Gaelic Angel pinned B.A. Tycho in the center of the ring, shoulders down. In a triple threat between Dancing with Draven, Gaelic Angel, and B.A. Tycho, the current champion at the time. Lunas, ooh, Sledgehammer straight to the jaw. Lunas covering Zarataro. Kick out of one, but Potato was also there. Make sure that the count stopped. Zarataro and Potato do have very similar, uh, similar clothing styles, but they are not friendly to each other in this match. They are both, it, it is everyone for themselves, and Bluna seems to be bleeding above the left eye as Potato just sends them to the floor, just tosses them like a sack of shit to the floor right in front of the French-Canadian commentators. And Zarataro getting ragdolled by the German suplex by Potato, one of the best German suplexes in the business. Luna's taking this advantage for all the chaos to just get into the ring. Double stomp to the chest. Walking all over Potato like a mat. Potato eyeing up Blueness, but not quite sure what to do there. Drop kick, but can't take that stone wall down. That is Potato. Sledgehammer to the gut. Driving that sledgehammer into the body. Lunas knocking it out of their hand. Ooh! A fucking blue moon! Discus blue moon off the top! Or off the off the middle rope. I was completely caught off guard as much as their Atara was, and we nearly saw a new champion. But Potato was watching the whole time. But Zarataro is in in a, is in a dangerous position. All alone in the ring. Potato plunge was in sight. Big splash in the corner. Zarataro fighting out the potential potato plunge. Lunas getting potato into the corner. Zarataro trying to hype himself up. Potato plunge, no, the German suplex again to Blunus. Potato German sup suplexing everybody off the rope sends Zarataro over. Creating a lot of distance between him and Blunus. So if he goes for a pin on the champion on the outside, that's completely valid. And Blunus has got to make a lot of a big trek over there. But Potato obviously spending his time. Clothesline. Sends Potato back into the ring, trying to create some distance. Blueness into the corner. Off the barricade. Zarataro back in the ring. Potato. Scoop slam. Plants the open weight champion. I thought maybe going for a cover, but Blueness circling the ring, making sure that that won't go off. Ooh, sends Zarataro over the top rope. If this was a battle royal, he would have been eliminated. Potato plunge, no. Back elbow to reverse it. Hurricane Rana flattens. Reversal drops. Blunus right on their face. Goes for the cover. They're already bleeding face. Two go. Zarataro breaking it up and Potato nearly getting that championship. Kendo stick in Zarataro's hands. Zarataro pulling out every instrument to his advantage, and that's what you gotta do in an open weight championship match. Use the rules to your advantage. Potato trying to take care of everybody in the ring. 
European uppercut. Keeping control of everybody in the ring. Sends Zarataro up and over. Again, using the strategy of having the ring be the, the blockade for Blueness, because if he can get the pin off on Zarataro on the outside, that could be the win. But of course, if Zarataro can get the pin, then it's even it's it's a double-edged sword. You have no one to save you, but Blueness back up onto their feet and Potato. Ooh, I thought Blueness was gonna roll them up there. Potato gets caught off guard, throws Blueness into the ring. This is for the open weight championship, folks. This is for taking it out of season one. Swinging neck breaker. Ducks the punch off the ropes, misses it. I heard something crack. I hope Zarataro's all right. DDT to Blueness. Drop kick to Potato. Zarataro, the champion in complete control now. Needs to find his opportunity. Goes for the cover. I mean, this could be it. To retain the championship at Zarataro. Lunas has took in so much punishment in that match. It was all about a well placed pin, and Zara Taro retains the open weight championship for season one. Your season one open weight champion is Zara Taro. An impressive new member of MPW. I could see a future Icon Division champion. For Zara Taro, or in Zara Taro, but a former world champion will have a match next, or arguably two former champions. If you think Beeps World and Schmeeps World are the same person, but it's going to be Beeps World versus Schmeeps World last idol standing match. We will see you guys next. It is time for the most anticipated, one of the most anticipated matches of tonight. It is Schmeep's World versus the so-called Beep's World. Schmeep's World had a shot at the Idol Division Championship one more time, but this so-called Beep's World would come out of the shadows like a boogeyman every time. And after one too many altercations, Schmeep's World was just unable to hold her own and was taken out by T the Sheba, who will be the number one contender for Glitchy's uh, Idol Division Championship, but Schmeep's World is looking to get payback against this so-called Beep's World, so-called Dark Variant from another dimension, another timeline, Beep's World. I mean, we don't know too much, but we do know that, well, I know that she's got some pretty gnarly bionic arms, and, uh, she is not kind, okay? I'm just gonna say that, she's not kind. Making her singles debut. The only time we ever saw Beeps World was in the 30 participant battle royal. And they have been like a nightmare for Schmeep's World. Constantly getting in their way. They have some sort of grudge with Schmeep's World. And Beeps World is here to maybe prove who's the better Schmeeps. This is a last idol standing match, meaning that it's unlike any other match we have ever seen in MPW. It is, you have to knock your opponent down for 10 seconds. It's like boxing. You have to knock your opponent down for the 10 count. It's not a three count, it's a 10 count. That's seven more letters. You have to pick up the win that way truly proving that you beat your opponent because sometimes pins aren't always 100% sometimes someone has the ropes ref doesn't see it maybe it's a quick count maybe they just kicked out at three you never know but in a last man standing or a last idol standing match you truly have to put your opponent out and I don't I I don't know how I got through this sentence because Chills are going up my spine as Beeps World makes their way to the ring. Slow and and terrifying, honestly. 
the aura rating, the aura ra radiating off of Beep's world. I mean, I still feel my ribs whenever I feel like it's like the Harry Potter scar, the pain in my ribs from when I went up against her valiantly uh, goes off every time Beep's world is around. Beep's World looks ready. I mean, I don't know how you prepare for someone like Beep's World. This is a mirror match, if anything. It's like picking Lucina or Roy against Marth and Smash Bros. It's a freaking Beep's World Echo Fighter, but... Beep's World versus Beep's World. Beep's World... Running out of the corner, but Schmeeps has it set, and this is definitely not going to get confusing as we go along. Bulldog by Schmeeps. And another Bulldog plants that I thought she was going for an I'm Prettier. Beeps World has these scars, these not much is known. I've only been told tidbits in their rumors. I've, I've been told that Beeps World is from an alternate timeline, a future potentiality of Schmeeps. This might be what Schmeeps turns into over the years. I don't know what could cause this, but it's got to be something very dark and, and evil and sad, I guess. Drops under. Big boot just putting it straight through Schmeeps. Because it seems like Beeps World has been doing nothing but targeting Schmeeps ever since she's shown up. And Schmeep's world isn't unfamiliar with spooky people trying to hurt them. They dealt with Glitchy back in the day. And now, with this format of last per last idle standing, it is basically Falls Count Anywhere. It's ostensibly Falls Count Anywhere. The only thing you need to do is put your opponent down for 10. Put them down long enough that they can't get up, basically. DDT onto the floor! So we can see this match spill into the crowd, into the back. We don't know where this will go. Ooh, Nady T right onto the head of the sledgehammer. I mean, Schmeeps probably felt good on that one. Finally being able to put Beeps in her place. German suplex. And the referee starts the count as Beeps is face first into the ground. Schmeeps world. Standing the ring. Four count. Is Beeps World already dead? Five. Six. I'm I'm flabbergasted. Beeps World. Okay, Beeps World back up. I thought Beeps World died already. I mean, getting your head dropped into a sledgehammer as these two stare each other down. I mean, that's that's not a simple simple thing. These two are Having a stare down. The tension in the arena can be cut with a knife. Be right after we'll be right back after this commercial break. And we are back after that commercial break. Beeps World making it back into the ring. Step up. Head scissor by Schmeeps World. And Beeps World is back on the ground. Two. Beeps World might legitimately be like concussed and dead and injured. Four count. Five. Six. No, Beeps World. It's not going to be that easy. <laughs> 
Or maybe it will be. Beast World is saying, come on, Beast World, where was that demon before? Where is that evil, evil lady that would attack relentlessly? Maybe Beast World is just taking these opportunities to get rest in. I mean, that would actually be very, very smart. Like, just take your time. Maybe Beast World has been playing possum this whole time. Leg drop onto the arm. That's her critical rolling arm. And continuing to work over the arm. Flipping beeps, or schmeeps over, does beeps in front of the French Canadian commentators. Beeps World's got a chair. And Schmeeps World saving the French Canadian commentators. Beeps World still down for the seven count. Beeps World's got to start thinking about getting up soon. Ooh, nine count, cutting it close. Even if you're spending that time to recuperate, you, you're cutting it close because the referee can call it ten while you're standing up. <laughs> Spinning head scissor to Beeps World. I mean, this match has been all Schmeeps World so far. Beeps World is like, I'm not letting you rest. Like, <laughs> Schmeeps World obviously sees that Beeps World is completely all right and is not going to just let her rest in the center of the ring for the for the eight count. Going up for the Falcon Arrow. Superplex off the top, but no Beeps World. Beeps World sends Schmeeps to the floor. Boom! Flying chop with the robotic arms of Beeps World. But Schmeeps World showing nowhere. Tilt a world DDT. Not given. Beeps World a time to think. Critical roll. Going up top. Putting Be wanting to put Beeps World away here. What could Schmeeps be thinking? Hurricane run off the top. Turning to the ref, seeing how they feel. Is Beeps World completely down for the count? Did Schmeeps World just put Beeps World in her place? Schmeeps World seems to think so. Cutting it close, seven, no, Beeps World stands back up. And Schmeeps immediately on the offensive. Back to the count, trying to make sure every shot matters. Maybe those last kicks were just enough to get Beeps World down, four count, five. This is unlike the count out 10, which could be up to the referee's discretion. Seven. Beeps World back up, but rolling out of the way as to not immediately get assaulted by Schmeeps World, who landed tailbone first onto the floor right in front of the French King commentators. Now ribs are being assaulted with a kendo stick from Beeps World. Those swings powered by every neuron in her robotic arm. Mapes World back in the ring. Beeps World on the floor. Four. Five. Six. It is not looking good for Beeps World. Seven. Eight. Nine. Beeps World's got to get up now, but I think Schmeeps World. Just completely dominated her demons. I don't know if I don't know if Beeps World was running on low battery mode or something, but maybe she had airplane airplane mode turned on. But Schmeeps World just putting away her demon to cap off her season. I mean, Beeps World was all talk, and eventually, once it got up to it, Schmeeps World put her down. We will move on to our next match of the night, though. An impressive showing for Schmeeps World, nonetheless. We'll see you guys there.
It is time for the MPW Icon Division Championship. For this match, because Merlin GTB and Gareth assaulted Bonk backstage, two on one, they both drag Thulu and Gareth on pardon have been banned from ringside and to keep the measures even more because we know that Merlin, if he can, will cheat at any opportunity he is given. They will be locked inside of the first ever Hell in a Cell. I, maybe the first ever. We might have had a Hell in a Cell before. But the first Hell in a Cell for the Icon Division Championship. Merlin GTB, a former two-time Icon Division Champion, the first ever Icon Division Champion, and the first ever dastardly man to to enter the squared circle. I mean, Merlin has been doing nothing but cheating his way to the top, and I mean, this will be the first chance, I think, that Merlin has actually straight up earned the title at this point. Merlin won the 30 participant battle royal and has now have to fight Bonk one-on-one -on -one inside of a steel cage. Like, if Merlin wins this match, that is complete props to him. But his opponent is going to be unlike anyone he has ever really faced. It is a scorned bonk. It is not just bonk. It is a scorned bonk. The unstoppable Icon Division champion. This is a rematch from last month. Minor seizure warning. We're having a little bit of a thunderstorm outside in this open roof arena this outdoor arena by the way Bonk the icon division champion he was assaulted by Gareth and Merlin and he's looking to get his revenge on Merlin the horse from outer space it's the horse of course the super Nayan Bonk One of the most dominant openweight champions of our generation. And he's just fucking jacked, dude. The Icon Division champion. He's already beaten Merlin once, so he knows he can do it. Bonk knows he can do it, but it's also a Bonk coming in off of getting attacked backstage two on one. So we'll have to see how much that affected Bonk getting assaulted backstage by both Gareth and Merlin. We'll have to see if any of that damage is carried over into this match. But the Icon Division champion, Bonk, I mean, ending his season one, even without the championship, he's done a lot. He won the Openweight Championship, was one of the more dominant champions we've had. He's won the Icon Division championship. Like, Bonk has done it. All, and he's, he's one of the newest members of the Icon Division. He's one of the newest MPW members. So, an incredibly impressive season one for Bonk. And you feel the energy radiating, bouncing off of Bonk, but you don't even know his true power. You haven't even seen his final form yet. Bronk isn't even at a fraction of his full potential. Bonk is one of the most dominant competitors in MPW history. And he hasn't even really been in MPW for more than a minute in wrestling terminology and wrestling time. Inside this cage, it is anything goes. And the cage is more of used as a measure to prevent others from entering the ring. The competitors may use the ring as or the cage as much as they'd like or as little as they'd like. 
It is meant to keep both Drag Thulu and Garethon Pardon from interfering in this match, or even Emrys Morgana as well. Anybody from it interfering. This is your semi, uh, semi main event. Your semi main event of the night, the Super Nay, and it's Merlin versus Bonk. Bonk holding that championship that Merlin and Gareth made. The custom championship that Gareth had altered. Holding it like a trophy to Merlin. And you know Merlin wants that thing back. That's him and Gareth's custom belt. Merlin's definitely got a chip on his shoulder. Can he put away the Super Nayan Bonk here tonight? Or will Bonk end off Season 1 retaining his championship for the first time ever in this rematch? In the cage, Merlin versus Bonk. Let's get it on. Bell has rung. Bonk just tossing him Fisherman Suplex. Now, when it comes to power, I mean, not many people can match Merlin, but Bonk is certainly one of the strongest competitors in MPW right now. Like, his, his muscles are barely contained within his suit. Merlin's going to go under the ring. The French Canadian commentators have a nice blockade for the splash zone here. Merlin got a metal bat to be used, but Butterfly Takeover... By Bonk, kick out a one for the champion. Working over the arm. And now Bonk is looking under the ring for something. They can fight on the outside for as long as they want. They can use any of the weapons. They can use the cage to their advantage. They can do whatever they want. As you can see right now, Bonk getting sent into the cage. And now Merlin's getting sent into the cage. They can use their surroundings all to themselves and be able to use whatever they want, but they are trapped inside of this cage until this match is over. Or until they bust right through it. I mean, Bonk is just tossing Merlin and now just disrespectfully kicking him. Set, just using the cage, Bonk. Expertly done, using his environment to his advantage, and so is Merlin, sort of. But not quite. You can see those chains locking the front door, making sure nobody enters this matchup. This will be determined by these two in this match. No Gareth, no, no Drag Thulu. One on one. We've seen Merlin use Gareth to his advantage, but we have seen Bonk also bring in Drag Thulu into his corner, so it's not like this has always been a uh, a one-on-two situation. Only backstage was it a one-on-two when Bonk got assaulted super kick by, Bo uh, by Merlin and Gareth, and that's what made this personal for Bonk. I mean, Merlin knew that Gareth was going to be banned from ringside, or had a potential inkling. You never know exactly what the boss is upstairs, but to ensure that he would have an advantage coming into this match, he assaulted Bonk. And we might see that damage show later on in the match as things progress. Spinning back kick, Shining Wizard by Merlin GTB to Bonk. Back in the ring, gets up top. Bonk already out cold. I mean, Merlin could take full advantage of this. Magic missile dropkick swatted away by Bonk clothesline. And now it's Bonk's turn to pick up speed. Flips him down and Bonk is on fire. Bonk is powered up. A little bit of a combo action to Merlin. Staring him down. Merlin's got him up in a fireman's carry. Into the corner off the challenger's turnbuckle. Bonk might be dripping blood from the nose. From the schnout. Chair gets brought in. 
Merlin looking to use all of his weapons, all the weapons that he has access to. Bonk getting a little bit cocky, maybe too big for his britches there. Super kick by Bonk, or by Merlin to Bonk. And now just rocking him with the rights and lefts. Sending him back into the ring. Ooh, fireball! Beam Clash connects to the challenger champion. Merlin nearly losing his shot at the title very, very early. The Beam Clash connects, and now Bonk taking the chair to his legs. Gonna beat his ankles and kneecap in. Can break his ankle. I mean, Bonk is somewhat of a nicer guy, I would say, but when it comes to someone like Merlin, he's showing no, no mercy. I mean, I, can you blame him? Merlin has done nothing but torment him and his friend. Merlin is a rocker, rocker, a locker room bully. And Bonk is just trying to get some revenge for the rest of the boys in the back. Kip up. Floats over into an inverted DDT, barely flipping the chair. Merlin's gonna go back outside. He's got a table. I mean, Merlin's first ever match was in a tables match, and that's, he picked up the first ever MPW match. Merlin gets back into the ring. Bonk, though, catches him off guard. Catching him into a, onto the chair, into the German suplex. Just launches Merlin and pins him right on that steel chair. Kick at it two again. Bonk nearly retaining the title. Merlin's got to do something, something big if he wants to win this championship. In the corner. And we know, Bo and we know Merlin wants to win this championship. Bonk Tornado DDT off the middle rope. Some say that middle rope has magic. Suplex, stalling suplex by Merlin showing that strength. Not many people can lift up someone the size of Bonk and especially for not this long Merlin with that cocky attitude of his. Merlin's gonna get under the ring again for another weapon, kendo stick this time. Filling the ring with weapons, chopping him. A left hand and now Bonk's got him up, driving him down. Elbow drop, a little flare on that one for Bonk. But Merlin rolling up the champion. We can see a new champion right here. Merlin. Oh my god. Nearly stealing the championship right from under Bonk. You have to make sure you're watching your opponent at all times. And Bonk nearly let it slide. Bouncing his head off each turnbuckle. My god. And now Merlin's going to make Bonk see stars for the championship. We can see Merlin get his third Icon Division Championship right here. No! Bonk kicks out at 2.9. Merlin not letting up, though. Knee strike. Merlin goes back outside, maybe looking for some more weapons. No. Nope. Thinks against it. Maybe just going out for a little bit of fresh air. Bonk's got that kendo stick. Swing, bada bada, swing. Had Merlin up against the ropes, but now fighting out of it, chop to the throat. Oh, beam, flash again, the champion to retain. One, two, three, and Bonk retains the Icon Division Championship.
the most dominant open weight champion looking to be the most dominant icon division champion ending ending the season one with a defense taking it out and defeating Merlin but that is not the last match of the night we still have the icon of or the idol division championship T the Sheba versus glitchy so far two for two the champions have retained can glitchy retain or will t earn her first ever idol division championship tonight you'll have to just wait and find out it's next and it is time for your main event of the evening and it is for the idol division championship this match will be contested in two out of three falls, meaning to win this championship, Tita Shiva and Glitchy have to pin each other tw uh, twice. But T the Shiva making their entrance. T beat Shmeep's World in the finals of the number one contender tournament to make it this way. And this is the, f the second time T has gotten an Idol Division Championship match in uh in one-on-one -on -one, i believe t was in the first ever idol division championship match and since then has been chasing her tail trying to get this championship but has been just unable to get it t the sheba is looking to finally make her dreams come true and pick up that sought pick up that sought after Idol Division Championship. T has held the Openweight Championship. And T has a lot of history with Glitchy Bastards. I mean, when Glitchy was sort of a uh, a queen of darkness, as some called her, she, uh, in some ways, manipulated T the Sheba onto her side, using some sort of magic of sorts to get T to work with her. That was when T went twisted, and whenever T went twisted, nothing good ever came of it, you know? There's nothing good ever about being bad. And so T has been on the straight and narrow ever since. We might see a bit of twisted T in this one, but these are just two different people from when they were back in the beginning. Some of MPW's originals. But they are completely different people at this point. Glitchy Bastards and T the Sheba going one on one for the Idol Division Championship. Glitchy, a three time Idol Division Champion. T, a one time Openweight Champion. Can T finally get her championship? Can she finally win the Idol Division Championship or will she fall fate to Glitchy Bastards, one of the most dominant idols in the division, to ever lace up a pair of boots? I mean, Glitchy may be a changed woman, but there's still that darkness inside of her causing that lightning in the background to show. T the Sheba being shown what it's all about. This is your main event of season one, the final match of the season. Can T win the championship or will Glitchy take it home? Two out of three falls. Other than the two out of threes, three falls, I, if I'm remembering the rules correctly, I think everything else should be above board. There's a singles match other than just getting two pins, so you don't want to pull out a weapon. You want to be away from the ropes. Booty pop and moonsault by T the Sheba. Clothesline hooking T down. And just bashing T's back of the head. Onto the canvas. Glitchy is one of the most impressive idols. I'm also openweight champion, I should say. Glitchy's also an openweight champion. Former openweight champion. But uh, three-time idol division champion. Like Glitchy is at the top of the hill for the idol division for sure. But if T the Sheba can cap off her year with a the gold around her waist, that would be something to celebrate for at the... Uh, celebrate 
in the Shiba family crossbody over the top rope right next to the French Canadian commentators booth. Sends Glitchy into the barricade. As you can see, two count. I mean, this can count as a fall. If you get a count out, that counts as a fall. So both of these two could sit past the 10 count, take a 10 count fall, and be a singles one-on-one -on -one match. Running power slam into the concrete. The force behind Glitchy's power slam is insane in the height she gets on it. But she's feeling proud of herself as T's getting back up. Six count. Both make it back into the ring. Glitchy is not an easy feat to take out. But T has got some deadly feet, so it, it kind of evens itself out. Sidewalk slam to T the Sheba. The sidewalk slam has put away a few people in Glitchy's career, so T's got to watch out. Pinfall or submission in the center of the ring. Countouts, that's a way you can get a fall knee drop from the top. So you got to be careful. Super kick doesn't knock. Does some damage, but doesn't knock Glitchy down into the corner. It is hard to chop the trunk of the tree known as Glitchy. I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't want to meet Glitchy in a forest, especially not at night. Bumps him. Combination gets stopped by T the Shiba. Into the corner. Close line. Covers T. Near fall for the first fall. You got to get two of those, but T nearly took a negative. Was going to have to work her way back. Goozles T, but T the Sheba reversal sling blade. The heights you got to make to sling blade someone like Glitchy to the champion. Ooh, a near fall for the champion. We could have saw the first fall of the match. First to two, two out of three. You really got to earn it if you want to get it, T. Pedigree blocked by Sh by Glitchy. I almost called her Schmeeps. Scratching the back of the dog. Goozles T again. For a frame drop, and it could... Be all downhill from here for T. The Sheba 2 kick out. No. T is not taking the first fall. Sling blade. Glitchy rolls out of the ring. And T has her in her sights. Set up over the top cannonball. Colliding with Glitchy. Throws Glitchy back into the ring. Or T back into the ring. T flips Glitchy around. Frankensteiner! Frankensteiner to Glitchy. Spiking her head onto the floor. How do you even get up that high? Two! The first fall was nearly... T's to grasp. T now, though, eyeing up Glitchy. Could this be the point? Pedigree position in the center of the ring for the first fall. Can T the Sheba get the advantage for the championship? One, two. No, Glitchy kicks out at two. This is going to be a rough road ahead for T. But if anyone can do it, she can. Moonsault rolls through, though. Clothesline ducks it. Knee strike. Sends Glitchy onto the ropes, onto her butt. Glitchy's in a precarious situation! Right on the button! 
Knee strike. Drived into the head of Glitchy. Working the long legs of Glitchy. Glitchy in position for another knee strike. Just feeding knee strikes to Glitchy. But Glitchy's still in it. Don't ever count out the behemoth known as Glitchy, Backbreaker. The tallest member of the MPW roster is going to prove why she shouldn't be underestimated. Over the top in front of the French Canadian commentators table. Bashing the knee against the ground. Against the concrete. Three count just tossing T into orbit. It's Glitchy's turn to punish T. Four count. T lighting up Glitchy with chops into the commentator's table. Five or six count. They got to get back into the ring if they don't want to get counted out for the first fall. T making it in a seven. Could we see T get a little bit twisted here? Twisted T, no, Glitchy. Drop kick to the back. Dude, oh no, mandible claw to T. T may be in the ropes though. Rope break, yeah, T is in the ropes. Too close to the ropes, break it up. Rope break, break it up. Sidewalk slam to T again. This isn't good for T the Sheba. Goozles T for a second frame drop. The first fall in the grasp of Glitchy. Trying to pull T away, I mean taking time, giving T a chance to recuperate, giving Ch T a chance to catch her breath. Is that enough? Two, three, the first fall is for Glitchy. T the Sheba is gonna have to have a up uphill battle if she wants to win the championship. She's gonna have to pin Glitchy two times in a row. But has Glitchy done enough to put away T for good? Elbow drop. T is in trouble. She is dazed looking at the lights. I think Glitchy's saying it's over. The champion, no. Maybe playing possum. Off the ropes, drop kick, taking. The center of gravity down for Glitchy. T hyping herself up on the apron. T's got a long way to go. Can she tie it up quickly? Make this advantage not go for very long. Into the corner. T the Sheba. Looking to punish Glitchy. Up top. Avalanche pedigree, no, Glitchy, fighting out of it. Spine buster off the top rope. T the Sheba went to risk it all, and that's why it was a risk. Glitchy counters it. The longer this match goes, the worse it is for T the Sheba clothesline. Goes the cover, Glitchy, could that be enough to catch Glitchy off guard to tie it up? It is. One fall to finish. One fall to finish. T the Sheba could be the champion if she gets one more pinfall or submission. Glitchy cuts out the lights. Could the lights turning out be as dark as T's futurist champion? Mandible claw to T. Rope break? Yes, it is. Again, the ropes. Way too close to the ropes. Break it up. T though is in so has taken so much damage. She's got to do something big to put away Glitchy. Ducks under, drop kick for the championship. This is T's dream since day one. Leg drop to the back of the head. Glitchy's crawl into the corner. She's got nowhere to go. T the Sheba. Tree of Woe. Knee strikes to the gut. Doing as much damage. Glitchy's got nowhere to go. T 
T the Sheba going up top. Can she hit it this time? Twist. Oh no! Zoomies! <laughs> T the Sheba's got a little bit of zoomies there. One more time up top. Twisted T connects for the championship. T is not done. Gets glitchy down, hooks the arms. Pedigree! T feeling the wear of the match though. She's got to pin the champion. Shoulders down. One, two, three. T the Sheba has done it. The first time ever, T the Sheba is the Idol Division Champion. The childhood dream, the young dream of T the Sheba has come true. T the Sheba will have something to put on the fridge for Mama Inu. The Idol Division Champion finally is T the Sheba. This was the ending to MPW Season 1. This was Masu Pro Wrestling Presents. See you next time, and I'll do just that.